Okay, fifth grade, lesson 26. This is on division algor algorithm. Kind of a weird name, right? Okay, but this is actually easy to, um, to explain. You actually learned it maybe last year, the year before, something like that. Remember the dad, mom, sister, brother? Okay, we kind of reviewed this a few lessons ago. But what does the D actually stand for? Divide. Divide. What does the M stand for? Multiply. Very good. What does the S stand Subtract. for? Subtract. Subtract. And what does the B stand for? Bring down. All right, now we use this mom, dad, sister, brother just to help you see kind of maybe how it goes in a family. Okay, but it actually does mean something different and he helped us realize what that is. Okay, this is what you will follow every time you do division problems. Okay, so it's very important that you know exactly what you're doing so that you don't forget what steps next. Okay, so divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. I'm going to erase those words um, and just use the abbreviation up there. Okay, so let's do one of these problems and I'm actually going to do one that has a decimal number so we can learn a little bit about how to divide with decimal numbers. So I have $8.52 divided by 3. So basically it's kind of like saying I spent um, $8.52 on three items. How much was each of those items? Okay, so when you're working with division, you're usually talking about each, something that has to do with each of something. So. We're wondering how much each of the three items were because it brought us to a total of 852. Okay, so when you're working with division, you're going to ask yourself, you're going to look at this first number, 3, and you're always going to look at the very first number that's inside this, okay? Remember that? So we're going to ask ourselves, 3 times what equals 8? Now, sometimes we don't actually get a perfect number, but we have to get as close as we can without going over. So... 3 times what will give us the closest number to 8? Three times 4, would that work? 3 times 4 is 12. So let's do 3 times 2. That would be 6. That's kind of close to 8. And 3 times 3 is 9. So we went over. So, so 3 times 2. two. Yep. So we're going to put a 2 here. Now I want you to pay attention to where I write my 2 because it's very, very important. I put it above the 8. If I were to put it here, it's wrong. I would put it in the wrong spot. Okay? Because I'm working with the 8, I have to put it in that spot. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we divide it, so I'm going to put a check mark. Okay, now let's multiply. What is 3 times 2? Uh, 6. Very good. You're going to write it underneath the 8. Remember that? Okay. Then you're going to do what? You subtract. Very good. So we've got 8 minus 6, and we'll get 2. And then what's next? Bring down. Very good. Bring down means you, the next number inside of this, um, kind of almost a, a rectangle, but inside of this you're going to bring down. Okay. And then, that doesn't mean you're done. You start back over until you can't bring anything else down. Okay? So now we start back over. So I'm going to erase these right there. And now the new number that you're going to focus on is this one down here that you're working with that we figured out. Okay? So now we're going to ask ourselves three times what will go into this, all of this, 25. Okay? So let's see. Three times... 8 would be 24, and 3 times 9 would be 27. So which one works? 24. 3 times 8. So I'm going to put an 8 here, okay? That's our next spot we need to put it in, all right? And the reason why we're putting an 8 there is because we're working with this whole number 25, and we go up, okay? So 3 times that, so we've divided. 3 times 8 will be close to 25. So now we're going to multiply. 8 times 3 is 24, right? Uh -huh. Okay, now we're going to subtract 25, take away 24, we'll have one left, and we're going to bring down the next number that we've worked with. It's always good to draw these arrows so that you know which one to bring down next, okay? So we have 12 here, alright, that's our next part of the problem, so then we start all over, okay? 
And we're going to divide. 3 will go into 12 how many times? 3 times what equals 12? Uh, 4. Very good. 4. Okay, and I'm putting it right above. Here's 12, so I'm putting it right above that. All right, now we're going to multiply. What is 3 times 4? 12. Subtract. 12 take away 12 is 0. Is there anything to bring down? No. Nope, that means we're done. Okay, check. So our answer is 284, okay? Now, it's important when you see this decimal, when you're working with decimal problems in division, you're just going to slide it up. Okay? So how much was each, let's say we're working with um, tablets or notebooks, okay? And you bought three notebooks for a total of 852. How much was each notebook? 284. Very good. See that? Okay, so we have two, $2.84 for each notebook. We multiply it by three, we would get this number in here. Okay, so that's how it would work. And so um, that was how you would do one with a decimal number, okay? Now let's work with one that's not decimal, okay? So I'm going to put dad, mom, sister, brother up here again. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. And write this problem on your paper. 234 divided by... Five. Now, there's something I want you to see that's very important that you notice when you're working with division problems, okay? And the first thing, remember how I told you, you always look at the first number, okay? Can five go into two? Five times what does that equal close to two? Well, we start with five times one, and that would be five, so we've already gone over. So that won't even work, will it? Mm -hmm. Even if we choose one, the lowest number to multiply by, we still get way over a 2, okay? So what this means is that 5 won't go into 2. So you can either put a 0 here or just put an X, or you can just leave it blank. A lot of the people that I teach like to put an X there to help them, to know that you can't work with this number, so we put an X. Okay, so that leaves us to work with this number, that number 2 and the 3, okay? So now we're going to say 5 times... What equals 23? Do you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see, what's the closest number that you could choose? 5 times 4 would give you 20, and 5 times 5 would give you 25. So which one should we choose? 4. 4. Okay. So because we're working with all of this, 23, we're going to put the 4 right here. See that? I don't want to put the 4 here because we're not just working with the 2. You see that, Eli? Don't want to put the 4 here. Because we're not just working with 2, we're yeah. working with 23, so we put it here. See? That's why I put the X there, so I didn't accidentally put the 4 there. Okay? Just helps me. Okay, so we divided. Now let's multiply. What is 5 times 4? 20. Now we're going to subtract. 23 take away 20, and we would get 3 left over. Now we're going to bring down. Okay, so I'm kind of moving a little bit quicker this time. All right, now we're working with this number. We're done up here. We're just working at this one. So let's start over. We're going to divide. 5 times what will equal 34? Well, 5 times 6 is 30, and 5 times 7 is 35. So which one would be the best one? Um, the 30. Yes, 5 times 6. Okay, so we divided. Now let's multiply. 5 times 6 is what? 30. So I'm going to write it down here. Now we're going to subtract. 34 take away 30, we would get 4 left over. And then we're going to bring down. Is there anything else to bring down? No. No, there is not. So what does that mean? We have a remainder of 4. Okay? And then when I'm done doing my problem and we finish, I just erase this X just so that I can see that it's just 46 remainder 4 and it doesn't have an X in front of it. Okay? You feel like you understand it? Mm-hmm. Okay. And that's how that would work. So... If you want to check if you've done it right to see if you get this number, we would take 46 and times it by 5. So watch this. This is kind of doing the backwards method. 46 times 5. Okay, I'm just going to do this quickly. 6 times 5 is 30. Here are the 3. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 3 more is 23. Okay, so it's 230. And then this remainder 4, you would just say I'm going to add 4 more to it because I had 4 more remaining. And that equals 234 which is exactly what we wanted it to equal, okay? You don't actually have to do this, but it's a good checking method, okay? Did I move too fast? 
Hmm. Well, you got it? Okay. All right, last thing I want to teach you is this. Sometimes they'll show you a problem that looks like this. All right, do you remember what I told you this means? No. Okay, this means whenever you see a letter next to a number, it actually means to multiply. So here's what it's actually saying. Five times what equals 365? Okay, so let me show you how you would figure that out. Watch how I do this. 365 divided by 5. Because what I'm asking when I put it in this kind of problem is 5 times what equals 365. So when I'm missing a number in my, it's actually called a factor. If I'm missing a factor in multiplication, what do I do? I divide to get the answer. Because what I'm asking is, is 5 times what equals 365? And if I put it in a division term, watch what happens. 5 times what equals 365? I'm asking the same question, right? So this helps us figure it out, though. Okay? So let's figure out what the n is. All right? So let's look at this number, 5 times this, or 5 times what equals 365. All right? So we're going to look at the first number. You're going to help me do this one completely. Okay? Can 5 times something equal close to 3, or does it go over? Five times no. No. Five times one gives us five, but it's already gone over. So well, you use zero. So that means it doesn't work. You put an X there or zero. Okay? Okay, so I said, well, that won't work. The three won't work. So now we're going to take three and six. Okay, 36. So I'm going to ask myself five times what equals 36? Five times six. seven. Five times six is 30. Five times seven is 35. 5 times 8 is 40. So 5 times 7? Seven? 7, very good. Okay, so I'm going to put my dad, mom, sister, brother. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. Okay, and so I divided. Now I'm going to multiply. 7 times 5 is 35, we said. Now we're going to subtract. 36 take away 35 would give us 1, one left. And now we're going to bring down. Okay? And then we start all over again. Okay? Five, we're working with this number now, okay? Five times what equals 15 without going over? Three. Three, very good. So we're going to put three here, okay? And so we divide it. Now we're going to multiply. Three times five is 15. Subtract. 15 take away 15 is zero. Anything else to break down? No. But once you get a zero, you know you're done, okay? Just to let you know. So our final answer, I'm going to take away my X. Final answer is 73. Okay? Feel like you understand it? Yeah. And that is lesson 26.